The next condition, developmental dysplasia of or of hip, is also called as congenital dysplasia of hip previously. This is seen in more lean females, and one out of five cases is bilateral. The problem here is the acetabulum that is usually curved and deep in which the head of femur fits in is now shallow so the head of femur cannot fit in so the patient cannot abduct the thigh what is abduction abduction is both thighs are moving apart from each other now abduction of thigh means both the thighs are coming close to each other what this patient cannot do is cannot put the thighs far apart from each other the risk factors for ddh is oligohydramnios metatarsus adductus torticollis breech presentation and ddh is seen mostly in the left side of leg left leg now first born child are usually affected with this disease if you see here this is the acetabulum in the pelvic bone it is usually curved in which the fem femur head fits in the problem in this disease is this acetabulum is shallow or you can say it is flat so the femoral head slips through now let's see some tests and signs Barlow's test and Ortolani's test. You must have read about these tests in your Arts and Science of Medicine classes. Now, let's see this test. What we said earlier was the patient due to DDH cannot abduct the thigh, that is, spread the thigh from far apart. If you see in this Ortolani test, this patient thigh is in uh, adduction that is both thighs both thighs are close together now the femoral head is not in the socket now when you abduct the thigh manually which the patient was not able to do the femoral head sits inside the acetabulum if you see in the barlow's test now the thigh that was adducted previously in the ortholonis test is now going to be adducted that is bringing the thighs close to each other now this causes the femoral head to slip out this is dislocation test barlow's test ortholonis test is also called as reduction test because you are reducing the femoral head back into the acetabulum now these tests are very important to know a mnemonic you can think about is barlow's test is bad test because it dislocates the hip by adducting the thigh now galliazzi sign when you flex the hip if you you can see the uh, knees are not in the equal heights the side in which the there is ddh that side knee will be little less in height than the normal knee this is galliazzi sign classic sign is used for bilateral ddh because if you see in this galliazzi sign one side has a problem and the one side is short if both side have problem both will be short and both will look normal for these cases classic sign can be used then we also have another sign vascular sign of narath normally the femoral femoral pulse is palpable but in ddh it is not palpable this is vascular sign of narath let's see some important lines used in ddh hilgen rainer shenton line and perkins line hilgen rainer line is an horizontal line hilgen rainer horizontal line from the triradiate cartilage of the pelvis perkins line is a vertical line from the 
border of the acetabulum this is the acetabulum and the border of acetabulum if you draw this line it connects to the femur now the shenton's line from lesser trochanter of the femur if you draw an arch it will connect to the pubic ramus this is shenton's arch if you see in a dislocated hip the Hilgen Rayner line does not pass through the triradiate cartilage. The Perkins line does not pass through the femur. And the Shenton's arch is broken. If you see in this x ray, this is the Hilgen Rayner line, Perkins line, and the Shenton's arch. In a dislocated hip, this is the Hilgen Rayner line. Perkins line and the broken Shenton's arch. Now the investigations to be done is for screening ultrasound is best because this is this is usually done in children's and the investigation of choice is this. Now what is this? If you see this image the patient is going to go inside this box if and the patient if if there is something like this and the patient is going inside this is called mri machine and the treatment for the newborns public harness this is the image of public harness you can see the thighs are adducted the thighs are kept far away from each other in this position or one rosen splint the same mechanism or fresh splint. In children's, we do open reductions and osteotomy because this splint won't be very helpful. The next disease is leg, leg calvapathies disease. This is seen more in males, and one out of five cases is bilateral, that is, almost 20% cases. It is seen in first decade of life. It is often painless. It is usually the patient presents with an abnormality, painless, but later on he can have pain. The problem here is there is avascular necrosis of femoral epiphysis. I'll just tell you what is epiphysis in a minute. What this patient can do is the patient cannot abduct the thigh. That is putting the thigh far from each other or the patient cannot do internal rotation this leg calvaper this disease is associated with ADHD if you see this this is a long bone this is the epiphysis and metaphysis and this long part is diaphysis this orange colored part is the growth plate the problem here is there is avascular necrosis of the femoral epiphysis. So if the femoral head has a problem, it cannot fit into the acetabulum. So the, femo the bone, hip bone slips away. So the patient cannot do abduction and internal rotation. Now the test and sign, gag sign and crescent sign. Gag sign, you can see here, a part is chopped off and in the crescent sign you can see a crescent shaped thickening here this are uh, due to the avascular necrosis of the femoral epiphysis sagging rope sign you can see here this is the sagging rope sign fragmentation sign just like this one the frag there's a part being fragmented out this is fragmentation sign the investigation of choice again is mra and treatment is broom, broomstick cast. We saw that the patient cannot abduct the leg. So we abduct the leg with a cast. The next, next disease is slipped capital femoral epiphysis. In this disease, it is more commonly seen in males. And one out of three cases is bilateral. So it's almost 30 to 40 percentage cases are bilateral. It's usually seen in second decade of life. Slipped capital femoral, second decade of life. It's often painful. 
The problem here is the metaphysis is displaced anterior laterally. If you can see here in this image, you may think that the epiphysis is moved apart, but the epiphysis is fixed with the acetabulum properly. The problem is the metaphysis that has moved apart. So this name is a misnomer slipped capital femoral epiphysis but actually the problem is the metaphysis that is displaced anterior laterally this one like this now in this patient cannot do abduction internal rotation plus he also cannot do flexion of the hip this this problem is usually associated with obesity Now let's see some lines and signs. This is Klein's line that is from greater trochanter of the femur. If you draw a line, you can see some part of the femoral head above the line. This is normal. But in abnormal Klein's line, if you draw a line from greater trochanter of femur above the line, you won't be able to see any epiphysis of the femoral head. This is Trethoven sign. Remember, this is Klein's line. This is Trethoven sign. We also have some other signs in this disease: Kepiner sign, metaphyseal blanch of blanch sign. The investigation of choice is MRI, and treatment is fixation. Now, I have made a simple table for you to answer these questions in the exams because these questions are heavily tested.